Hello everybody, welcome to the Life Engineering Foundation. Today we got very interesting guest, one of the life engineer, homeschooler and uh, the science lover as well as philanthropist mind person called Vihan. Okay, mm -hmm. so Vihan actually he has uh, homeschooled himself a little while ago and uh, he has started his journey in the field of uh, homeschooling, educating himself by reading out certain books, watching certain, um, uh, you know, the documentaries, documentaries and all. Yeah. And uh, he is going to discuss certain things about his journey related to uh, the education that he wanted to gain yeah. in a particular sector, which is not, uh, you know, the schooly way. It is yeah. completely the non-schooly way. Yeah. So over to Vihan, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, so my name is Navya Vihan. As uncle just explained, I'm a homeschooler. I've been a homeschooler since 2020. And ever since I was four years old, I've been fascinated by dinosaurs. Now I'm Thank betting you. many people here might have been fascinated by dinosaurs at some point in their life. Most probably, yeah. I don't really know, but maybe. <laughs> My schooling journey started out when I was like just four and I really didn't like the normal type of schools. And then I really liked it in Delhi, but when we came to over to Bangalore, they didn't really respect my interests. They were like, no, I'm not talking about animals. No, no, don't do this. Don't talk about this. Only do this. Okay. So it really didn't feel as free as Del uh, Delhi. So, uh, so we started homeschooling, uh, open learning school. And I really enjoyed it there. But then I found myself getting bullied a lot. And then the quarantine happened. The virus hit. <laughs> and I became a homeschooler and I found that I could balance out the things I wanted to do with the things I had to do. I could balance out my free time and my studies along with my exercise and it was so much fun. And I really enjoyed homeschooling because I could be a little uh, freer, I didn't re really need to uh, be pushed to do a certain thing and I could uh, indulge in my interests. Wow, that's really great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's that's the journey that you have entered into the homeschooling. But uh, palanthropist, uh, what is that? Paleontologist. Called? Paleontologist, I'm sorry to, you know, uh, can you tell me something about that particular science which you are fascinated Yeah. About? Paleontology is the study of fossils. Mm -hmm. Now, what fossils are is that they're parts of a living organism or anything at that that have been trapped in sediment like mud or clay or anything. And as time goes by, they become one with the rocks. Basically, they become a part of the rock. And then us paleontologists, what we try to do is dig under the rock layers and look for these bones and shells and for fossil plant fossil implants, plants. Okay. imprints. Mm, okay. And then we bring them back to a lab for radiocarbon dating, studying other things about them and theorizing a lot. Okay. And that's how you'll come to know that how many years back the rock formation might yeah. happen and uh, the evolutionary theory behind that yeah. and many other things okay but for paleontology to happen you need to know geology and okay. biology. biology those three those two subjects are very important okay geology is the study of the earth when the rocks yeah the rocks basically yeah and if you know all the rock layers you'll know which types of fossils will be found in those layers basically the uh, rock layers or a film through time. Mm, okay. And for a biologist, well, it's obvious. <laughs> Dinosaurs <laughs> yes. and, other, and other things. Uh, okay. 
Uh, what would be the possible reason that the dinosaurs have got extinct at such a big animal? What is your lookout? Okay, my lookout would be, I'm siding with most of the scientists here. Okay, mm -hmm. but dinosaurs were basically killed by this huge meteorite. meteorite. This massive extinction, there was acid rain, many asteroid chunks falling and India just blew up. It just blew up like a bomb with all the volcanoes in the Deccan. Mm, okay. So that might be the reason that the whole population of the dinosaurs got ex extinct. Not, yeah, but not all of them. Mm, okay. Birds are still around. Oh, they are okay. dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. They are the families of the dinosaurs. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell me something about uh, the synonyms that you are finding from the dinosaurs to the birds, particularly which category of the birds? Are which on? category of the birds? So, uh, ratites or ostriches and things, those are the closest things to dinosaurs that we have. Oh, okay. Mm. Because they are known as paleonates, basically the oldest branch from bird, uh, that birds that branched off from other more dinosaur-like birds. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you want the oldest bird, just go to Germany, okay. Archaeopteryx. Okay, okay. I'm sure many people have heard of Archaeopteryx. Okay. It's a very old fossil, very beautifully preserved. If anybody gets the chance to go to London, go to the Natural History Museum there. Okay. You'll see the beautifully preserved fossil in what is known as a Lagerstätten. It's a German word which describes sediments from the bottom of the sea. Okay. And those preserve many things. Okay. okay. Hmm. What was once an ancient sea is now Solnhofen, Germany. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. A uh, few more things I, I just wanted to tell you regarding the common problems that India is facing currently is yeah. like we are purchasing almost like uh, four to five million uh, barrels of the crude oil from Russia and many other countries mm, yeah. and you know the crude oil is going, we have to dig it up from the very yeah. deep uh, layers of uh, the earth uh, crust. Yeah. and. Uh, uh, I think we have discussed before the camera that, you know, that uh, uh, basically the oil is getting generated because yeah. of the fossils yeah. um, that has buried uh, over the years, hundreds or thousands of years yeah, yeah. back. So uh, 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 in India, we do not have that much amount of oil, basically. Yeah. So, do you have any idea that uh, how such kind of uh, oil can be explored and which particular portion of India you might be thinking that the oil explorations would be more? Kashmir. Kashmir? Yeah. See, most of the crude oil that we use today came from ancient forests from the Carboniferous. And those trees weren't like modern trees. They were trees that didn't have wood and since there were no bacteria that eat uh, dead wood or dead plants slowly the plant would just decompose or burn and the charcoal would be buried mm -hmm. and since Kashmir has a lot of the uh, this period's geological history we can find a lot of crude oil there okay so if we do the exploration instead of the deep sea yeah. near to the peninsula and all yeah. if you do the little bit exploration in the Kashmir, Kashmir areas yeah or Ladakh areas you know yeah, in that particular yeah. places the chances of getting the oil, the crude oil will be quite more. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the time when crude oil was formed, the rest of India wasn't really a part of it. Mm -hmm. Only Kashmir. Kashmir, okay. Because the rest of India hadn't really come up from the sea yet. Correct, okay. Okay. And actually India is part of Africa because when Pangaea broke up, mm -hmm. mm, India was a chunk of Africa and Madagascar. Mm -hmm. So really, thank Africa for uh, just letting us have a huge continent. <laughs> so uh, actually subcontinent. subcontinent. But I prefer to call it a continent because yeah. it's been uh, there in the sea for a long time. Yes. <laughs> so uh, 
you 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 see a lot of uh, you know similarities between indians and africans basically yeah. because of that uh, detachment of the continents part yeah so how do you uh, you know describe that particular thing a little bit more um, that uh, what are the similarities are there when it comes to the geology when it comes to the habitat of the different animals yeah um, and uh, you know maybe the uh, uh, for example the kind of trees and the plants yeah. and the birds that we are having. yeah actually the one thing that africa has given the most are the environments okay Pangean Africa was a dry almost sub, almost subterranean looking a, a part of the earth and if you go back to india's geology india was actually like that oh okay hmm and modern uh, differences between africa and india uh, there are very few and far between okay. because the rainforests are borrowed from the congo because in the center of pangea or at least in the jurassic when india was still attached to the african continent mm, the congo was a thing okay so we have forests from there we also have some deserts and over time as africa has shifted towards more uh, towards a more dry savanna type habitat so have many swaths of india Okay. Basically, they are evolving at the same pace. Okay. Okay. So, It's not just that animals evolve; even continents evolve. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 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 let us talk about uh, you know certain birds yeah. because uh, bird uh, is like uh, you know. Uh, can you tell us something about the national bird, uh, which of, is of in, in, of India? Of peacock uh, about yeah, peacocks. Peacock. Uh, they are getting ext extincted, and there are so many other uh, birds, beautiful birds, that they are, are getting extinct. That are going extinct. Extinct. Um, so, as as a human approach to to preserve that, uh, what is your suggestion to the government? What would be my suggestion to the government? I'd say. stop cutting down the trees for the cheetahs cuz <laughs> <laughs> like last year was just cutting down trees in madhya pradesh for the cheetahs to live in and really they had the environment in maharashtra okay in other places near the deccan yeah deccan uh, plateau yeah, yeah the deccan plateau okay hmm. mm -hmm. but one major thing okay the indian government should do hmm lower poaching poaching is a huge issue here in india okay many species like the clouded leopard have become elusive just because of poachers hmm the state animal of manipur i think i'm pretty sure it's slowly going extinct here in india which is that the clouded leopard clouded leopard i just told you about it yeah yeah okay same thing with birds poachers some from africa some from here in india they are looking for bird feathers and hornbill casks have you seen the dome yeah, on yeah, the hornbill yeah, correct, correct. yeah that uh, that's how it communicates okay hmm basically they want to trade it for china because china is willing to pay big bucks for it okay a lot of money uh -huh. basically so they will catch such kind of this kind of birds and uh, you know have some grey market uh, yeah the the for shoot them skin them and skin them, yeah. yeah and then they'll just and then they'll just leave it yeah correct so that is one of the reason that uh, yeah. they are getting extinct i'm and i'm not blaming the tribals okay yeah. i mean some tribals need to poach to survive correct yes but there are these other people who just do it for money mm -hmm. as if they can't find happiness anywhere else mm, that's so pretty mm. yeah okay so when is this poachers actually okay that is one thing is, yeah. is there something naturally they are not getting the proper food water and all actually is there any way that yeah you know, uh, suggesting yeah. certain guidelines actually as more wars go on and more carbon gets released into the environment mm -hmm. the habitats that tigers are living in mm -hmm. in their habitats mm -hmm. which is near the coast mostly okay. that 
their water supply becomes salty okay and when a, whenever salt water goes into the stomach it solidifies okay basically leaving the whole body dry and dry, yeah. and nothing will di- be digested correct, correct. leading to yes. death and slowly more tigers are going extinct correct yeah. black market poaching is also a huge issue for tigers mm-hmm. and global and as global warming is driving these tigers out mm-hmm. more poachers are able to kill them mm-hmm. Correct, because they 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 don't have yeah. space to hide and yeah. Uh, do you think that the reforestation there are so, certain government initiatives are there yeah. in certain areas? Uh, would that help? Uh, uh, even Sadhguru uh, uh, Jaggi Vasudev has started uh, planting the trees. You know, um, uh, so many people they have invested mm-hmm. a, a certain amount of money uh, from from the Life Engineering Foundation. We have also donated few yeah. certain uh, donations. Yeah. But one thing you must remember before donating the money, mm-hmm. you must ask the department mm-hmm. if they're planting the trees native to that forest. Okay. Because usually here in India, people plant trees like apple trees, mango trees mm-hmm. that aren't really native to that environment. Okay. And slowly that is killing the environment itself. Okay. So, you so mu- what is your idea of reforestation? How do you do so, that? So, study the local uh, flora that you can see, mm. okay. find a few fallen seeds mm. and then replant those. Okay, rather than taking some foreign plants and yeah. plant it there. Yeah, actually. so that it doesn't become an invasive problem. Correct, correct. Okay. okay. Actually, India has a huge problem with invasive fish, uh-huh. mm. okay. especially the tilapia. Can you tell me something about it? I really don't know. Okay. So it's a fish found in Africa that was brought here to India because they really like the taste Uh when African traders, sorry, Indian traders went to Africa. Mm -hmm. And nowadays they keep these guys in big farms, big fish farms. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they escape into the wild Mm -hmm. and they start eating everything in their path Mm -hmm. because really nothing is adapted to them. Okay. 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 Mm. Uh, what are your future plans, Rehan? Okay, my future plans would be to make people more ab- aware about what the forest department needs to do and not what they should do. Okay. And so that, and I also want to help the field of paleontology when I grow older. Okay. Because really not many people show that much interest into it. Okay. I mean, sure, people like dinosaurs here and there. Right? Like the child says, oh, look, there's a dinosaur. Huh. But not really that many people go into it like full on into the studies. Okay. So I want to make people more aware about these unknown stories, not the non-dinosaur stories. Yeah, otherwise, then, otherwise the current animals will become... Uh, extinct. extinct and they will yeah. become dino- like dinosaurs for yeah. the next 10 generations. Same, same. Yeah, Correct. we'll basically yeah. become the dinosaurs. Yeah. We were once a dominant species ah. and then we'll go extinct. Extinct, yeah. So that, that kind of nature should not be prevailed. Yeah. All right, okay. So, uh, yes, such a bright child. Thank you so much, uh, Vihan, for uh, you know um, exploring such a valuable knowledge. Uh, let me tell you a few things. Uh, whatever we had just uh, within just 10 minutes, I'm, I'm, I'm with him since last five, six days almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure that, you know, you would love to come here and stay uh, yeah. with us for a little more time to have such kind of experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what, what I'm saying is uh, learning into the school, just the biology as a different subject, geology as a different subject. Yeah. Uh, geometry or the uh, uh, geography, uh, what we call it as African continent, uh, Indian continent, or the subcontinent and all. So instead of learning different subjects, how the subjects, uh, you know, correlate with each other to create, uh, you know, the new doctrine for the society, yeah. for the people, for the environment, what we are living into. 
and uh, what kind of problems that uh, you know we have faced or certain other species they have faced yeah. uh, and what can be the solutions for 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 today uh, so that they 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 cannot be the problem for tomorrow yeah. so those kind of things a little child what's your good age actually 12 12 years old okay so 12 years old person uh, homeschooled unschooled whatever you call it as is giving fantastic answers it's wonderful it's a talent of india uh, going to the school uh, particularly bullying them uh, getting fragmented knowledge of the individual uh, uh, subjects are uh, killing the talents of india i feel and uh, this is one of the best example which you can see uh, he has been bullied he has been you know uh, i would i would not say utter the word harassed but majorly you know focused uh, majorly only on the particular subject and the curriculum would definitely you know curtail his knowledge and the wisdom uh, what are his aspirations dreams that he is he, he really deserve to have it in his life and i i really you know uh, 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 wish the god that you know or i i really feel that uh, the the nature should give you that kind of opportunity and uh, india being a free country uh, you know you should do whatever you want to do which is good for the nation which is good for the society people and the upcoming generations all together thank you so much for listening so patiently thank you so much vihan yeah. uh, i would like to thank uh, his mother also to facilitate him uh, to come up here and uh, uh, to to engage into all this uh, i know the journey of vihan his mother uh, as uh, as not the straight forward like other ch uh, children like going uh, uh, you know school going children uh, i would really really thank uh, her mother to uh, uh, really thank to his mother to take such uh, you know firm decision for to uh, make sure that such talent uh, remains thank you so much see you in the next video bye bye bye